The, the famine Irish uh, had um, a unique impact on, on popular culture. They, when they arrived, uh, they're a rather unique immigrant group, especially compared to later immigrant groups, in that they came already speaking English. Uh, they came um, nominally familiar with English customs, which had also become uh, American customs. So they, their clothes, their food, their language, uh, their um, made them more familiar than later immigrant groups. And in some ways, they got kind of pushed into this model minority um, status by the early 20th century. They, they were more familiar than other later immigrant groups, including the Italians, Polish, uh, Jewish Americans, Chinese Americans. Um, and this put them in kind of a little bit of an awkward position in popular culture. Um, the popular culture provided an avenue for them to aspire to be part of the American mainstream. Um, but to some degree that required positioning themselves in relation to, well, what is not American? And that often was being characterized as other immigrant groups, uh, and as well as uh, African Americans. And so you see some of this friction in um, popular culture, including early sports. Uh, with boxing, um, you know, many of the early celebrities, including the first big sports celebrity, John L. Sullivan, um, specifically draped themselves in kind of ethnic character. Um, they'd have uh, shorts that were emblazoned with the Irish flag or shamrocks. Um, they often adopted uh, more ethnically sounding names. There were even some boxers who were not Irish who would adopt Irish surnames to appear Irish. Uh, and many of these early boxing matches were depicted as the Irish versus blank. Blank being Anglo-American, blank being African-American, blank being Polish-American. Uh, it, it was pitched as ethnic uh, conflict. And so it was interesting in that popular culture provided this avenue for the Irish to um, have success on a national level. Uh, to gain acceptance, when, uh, even in baseball as well. A lot of the early baseball players were uh, Irish-American. The Irish even dominated early baseball. Um, and, but it also required them to show how they were unlike other immigrant ethnic groups who were maybe not as successful, but who were maybe not as successful for uh, social and class reasons, not for anything inherently ethnic. Uh, you see similar things in other avenues of popular culture, um, like uh, newspaper comic strips. Um, the, the first uh, newspaper comic strip in the country was The Yellow Kid uh, by Richard Arco, which depicted life in the Lower East Side of New York in the ghetto. The main character is this boy who lived in the tenements who wears this oversized shirt that has probably been handed down from his parents. His head is shaved to get rid of the lice. He's impoverished. Uh, but it portrays the life as, as one of the happy poor. And this is one of the stereotypes uh, of the famine immigrants that is uh, rather unfortunate, um, that they were okay, they were accustomed to being poor, they were accustomed to the um, bad conditions in the areas they lived in the United States. Um, and that kind of uh, alleviated potentially any sense that we needed to do anything about it, that people had to um, resolve the health problems, the, the financial problems. There was uh, large amounts of children being orphaned. Uh, there's many famous photographs from that era, particularly by Jacob Reese, of the street urchins, these orphaned children whose parents had died uh, because of any number of diseases. And um, the, the cartoon, Contributed, contributed that in some way by, by constantly depicting this, um, this kind of fantasy of happy poverty. Uh, that evolved into uh, comic strips like uh, Bringing Up Father, which a lot of people are familiar with because it continued well into uh, the 1980s, um, which is about Jigs and Maggie. In fact, a lot of people know it as just Jigs and Maggie, which again is about Irish immigrants, came to New York City, but the, the, the hook in that cartoon is Jiggs wins the lottery and becomes a multi-millionaire. And the constant, the joke of the strip that fueled it for 50 some odd years is you have this, um, what everyone assumes, typical Irishman. He's poor. 
He's stupid. He's uneducated. He has filthy habits. He has, um, he's inclined to drink. Um, he's inclined to socialize with lower class people. And he, he himself is full of his own biases. And, uh, but here he is in high class American world. It's, this is a precursor to, uh, you know, Beverly Hillbillies and things like that. Um, but it again, that one was a unique turn in that the creator of the strip, George McManus, was an Irish immigrant, or was the child of Irish immigrants, famine immigrants himself. And so although it played on stereotype, it played with um, familiar uh, tropes that the audience, both readers who were Irish and non-Irish, were familiar with about the impoverished Irish, how they're uneducated, and how they have this potential to kind of disrupt the fabric of American society, it was a little bit subversive. Um, because usually at, at the end of most of the strips, people realize that, um, that Jiggs is better than so many high class uh, people in his surroundings. We don't want him to be uh, transformed. So it, it's almost an anti-assimilation um, lesson in that we don't want him to be fully assimilated. And we see this again and again in an American popular culture where uh, oftentimes various people take up the familiar stereotypes of, of famine immigrants, of the Irish more broadly, of stage Irish stereotype, and they, they don't reject it outright, but they use it to represent Irishness in another way. Um, another great example is the stage, the stage shows of the era, primarily um, beginning with minstrelsy, evolving into vaudeville by the 20th century. The Irish dominated stage uh, productions. They were, um, many of the most famous uh, minstrel performers were Irish Americans, including Thomas Rice, who made famous the Jim Crow character. Um, and it's interesting when you when you look at the performances, when you uh, look at the lyrics of the songs, uh, the construction of the the dramas they they'd make, they were very clearly playing on Irish stereotype. That and that certainly is what brought people to the performances. They wanted to see the stage Irishman. They wanted to see a large burly Irish wife scolding her husband and hitting him over the head with a brick. Um, there were certain things they expected, but then during the performance, they would get something a little bit subversive. Um, the story would be potentially pro-Irish, pro-home rule in some cases. Some, some of the songs, if you go back and look at, um, that were ostensibly about uh, the American South, um, going, you know, going back to Dixie, and you get a lot of these songs about pining for uh, your home, and ostensibly about the South, but if you step back and realize that it was an Irish, often an Irish immigrant performer, a famine immigrant, performing these songs, they take on a very different meaning uh, that became more and more obvious as time passed. And so uh, popular culture of this era offered the Irish opportunities. On one level, it was financial opportunity. A lot of them were able to succeed in, in the entertainment business in ways they might not have been able to succeed elsewhere. But it was also an opportunity to shift the conversation about what being Irish was going to mean in the United States. Um, the stereotypes were there. Uh, they were able to reclaim many of those stereotypes and try to do something with them uh, to make them uh, funny rather than just cruel, uh, to make them not just demeaning, but to have meaning that um, the Irish people themselves uh, could inform in some way.